Hello and welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and I'm here to let you know that this is a not safe for work podcast. We are teachers at the end of the week, and really the end of our ropes, and we'd like to be able to talk honestly and openly about education without having to worry about losing oh, losing our jobs. So we'll be using pseudonyms throughout the podcast, hence the Elvis. That's not really my name. Anyway, I'd like to thank all of the patrons on Patreon who make this possible for us. That's right, we have a Patreon for as little as five dollars a month you can get access to all kinds of bonus content there's over 100 pieces of audio on there it's really great and stuff that you can only get through patreon so sign up and do it now like these awesome people eccentric eslo lady terry j justin m tracy b miss Wonderstats, quentin p ekabex mistress mischief natasha s misanthropy princess buttercup dragon lady kelsey helena c aaron b stephanie s maggie m texas teacher Kristen, miss sunshine james nally j jody d Samantha D, Lisa C, Rachel, Jen Genie, Exhausted Band Director, Kimberly K, Jessica A, Swift Lab Owners, Amanda F, Ariana L, Physics Runner, Steph, Michael M, William P, Aldrich T, Escarpianita, Britt M, Teresa H, Biker Teach, Marsha M, Christina B, Kristen B, Jason F, Abby B, Sarah B, Regina N, Josie S, Sam B, Mary E, Jamie B, Kristen W, Vanessa J, Mary C, RJR, Kristen C, Johanna H, Ermi, Irma A, Nimi, and Sarah N. Thank Thank you guys so much for supporting the podcast. We love you guys. Also, I'd like to thank our sponsors at Lud Lamb Dramatics. If you are a theater teacher or no one in your building, send them to Lud Lamb Dramatics where you can get some of the best educational theater resources out there. Everything from classroom posters to buttons to pins. They are amazing. All right, my friends. Uh, really, everyone out there, take care of your mental health. It's a crazy world, and the kids are a little crazy too. And do what you can to make sure you're still functional so you can you know, do what you got to do. All right, my friends. I hope you enjoy episode number 170. Jeez, we've been doing this for a while. All right, kisses, friends. Enjoy. Balls for balls, 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 yeah. balls. <laughs> Happy birthday, Bunny. Thanks. I mean, you sang your own birthday song, but we still love you. That's so okay. welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and today I am joined by the wonderful Shirley Temper. I'm a very needy person, and I am deeply, deeply insecure. <laughs> I have no idea what's that for, what that's from, but I've heard it before. It's Jennifer that. Coolidge from White Lotus season two, which I actually haven't watched, but that TikTok sound is uh, my favorite. Yeah, I like the White Lotus season two. I enjoy it. I watched both of them like in a small marathon. And also joining us this week, Count Chocolate. You have the chocolate one, and he is so excited to be here. Hello, everybody. Yes. Hello, hello. I'm so glad you're here. And also with us today, the birthday woman herself, turning a young 32, Miss Bunny O'Hare! Oh, thanks. Yeah, we're happy you're here. Well, friends, it is, it's just, woo, it's, it's January. And honestly, I can't complain about my classes right now because everyone's being really cool and everyone's maintaining. And yeah, there's a couple little assholes, but overall my lessons and everything are going well. My headspace has been a uh, thunder, thunder fuck. Uh, the woman I was dating before and I broke up and that just like rocked me more than I think it should have. And so I spent like two weeks in and out of just like, you know, the whole break of face and it fucking sucks. But I went out of town this weekend and I got to stay with family and see snow and experience some people. And it was a wonderful, wonderful thing. And I feel back to me, which is beautiful. And I'm curious how you guys are doing. Um, who wants to go first? Shirley, how are you doing? Um, well, I had to take today off. I've just been very, um, lethargic and my limbs still were all heavy and I just had to like rule out COVID. We've had some COVID outbreaks in the area that I live and I ain't fucking around with it. Um, and I've actually been kind of quiet about it, but I've been in my own kind of depressive slump So that's been exciting. Um, can't really pinpoint why it's probably just seasonal, 
Um, but yeah, I've, I've not been great, but I had a drug show this weekend. Oh, well, you know, it'll pass. Um, definitely not my worst. So being where you are, are you guys getting some flack with the drag shows? Are they like putting police outside to make sure there's no no, like kids going in to read books or something? Not at all. Not at all. Isn't that crazy? You would think, because I live in a small town in East Texas, like you would think, but no, nobody could care less. Well, that's not a horrible thing. Yeah. No, and it's great. And, um, you know, I love performing. I love a creative outlet. I had a really good time. So, yay! I'm not well, gonna lie, good. though, I didn't have a good time until I got there because I was just plagued by body dysmorphia and insecurity and anxiety, and I like cried and had to wash my face and try my makeup again. As a whole thing, the body dysmorphia is severe up in here. It's one of my oh. uh, my my mental things. Can it, you just can't can get I, on my level? Can I just go on record though as saying like? I saw a picture of you from that, and you looked effing hot. So ah! I know that doesn't fix it, but you did. I pick. Yeah, I saw him too. But uh, Shirley, you rocking that hourglass, and you got like boom get chaka, boom chaka, boom chakas. It's well, you know. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll send it in the chat. Jeez. I'm just saying. Jeez. Well, I had a corset on. Just, just like yeah, I was in a lot of pain later. So it's not natural. I just want to throw that. All right. Well, good. (laughs) Count, how are you doing, man? It's been a little bit. I'm all right. Um, That's probably a lie. I'm doing as well as I can right now. Uh, My students are completely stressing me the heck out. Um, There have been multiple outcries um, of self-harm. And one of my favorites like came in and told me a straight up bold face lie and we have a really really good rapport and it immediately caused like a panic straight 911 call uh protocol in place like kind of a lockdown thing and then like an hour later i got a call from like dad that it was not true after we've already like called paramedics and I don't know. It it just kind of jacked me up that someone kind of, I don't think they were in their right frame of mind at the time, but I wrestled with it all weekend long. Like, why would you do this? Um, And, you know, and I told my coworkers, told my supervisor and they're like, Oh, you can't take it personal. I was like, Oh, but I am (laughs) because (laughs) Like, I don't know if you understand if someone has an outcry of or, or indicates self-harm, you you can chalk your whole day up um, because you kind of go into a protocol. Then after that, there's four Google Forms, there's documents. And so I'm on the flip side of that. Um, so I think I'm doing better today than I was a few days ago. Good. And I watched a little bit of football and I drank a beer for the first time in a while. So things are looking up. <laughs> That's good. I'm glad you're doing better. I feel the same way. I might not be great, but I'm better than I was a week ago. So I'll take that. Amen. Mm-hmm. And Bunny, birthday, what's going on? I mean, I'm actually surprised you're recording with us. I thought you'd be having some amazing Bunny birthday dinner or going out or like... I don't know, performing at a dueling piano bar or something. Bunny, what's going on? <laughs> no, it's it's a school night, and I actually have my uh, professional appraisal tomorrow. So um, nothing too crazy at the O'Hare household. But we did go out. Um, we went out for dinner last night with uh, the mama and the sister and um, the bestie and the foo of course. And Mr. O'Hare. Yeah. And we went and got Mediterranean food at this buffet, and I ate way the heck too much, and it was delicious, and I regret it 0%. So good. Uh, we just we just celebrated yesterday, so it's I. Yay. Are you doing any kind of celebrations today at all, though? Um, I mean, just kind of here at the house, it's hard with, with Fufu going to bed so early. 
and also it being a school night and my appraisal tomorrow. But um, Mr. O'Hare is picking up Thai food right now. So we are Ooh, at least going to have some Pad Thai. That sounds great. I'm happy yeah. for you. Well, friends, it's time for us to discuss things. And this one's been on my radar since last Thursday because, you know, it's always a race to the bottom in education when it comes to some of our states. We've got Florida doing some of the stuff Florida likes to do in Georgia and South Carolina. And, of course, Texas doing all kinds of fun stuff. But right now, we have to deal with Florida and what they're doing to the librarians. And it is just not cool at all. So, this article comes from Educational Week, edweek.org, and I'm sure a lot of Floridians have been talking about this. It says, new training tells Florida school librarians which books are off limits. School librarians in Florida will have to undergo training on choosing, removing, and curating books for school and classroom libraries to comply with state law passed last year. They are prohibited from using any instructional materials that include critical race theory, culturally responsive teaching, socio-emotional learning, social justice, and any other unsolicited theories that may lead to student indoctrination. They also have to seek input from parents before buying books and have to defend their choices in case of objections. Librarians and education experts told Education Week that the training is going to contribute to self-censorship on the part of librarians because they're fearful of black because they're fearful of violating the rules. That in turn could lead to students losing access to diverse perspectives, specifically, especially historical, historically marginalized students who find themselves represented by many of the banned book and instructional materials. Combined with the increasing number of book challenges and bans across the country, the law imposes an additional barrier for students having access. It's just very frustrating that it's turning into a battleground, says Kathleen Daniels, librarian. And ultimately, the ones that lose are the kids, and it's the most vulnerable kids. The state law required the training be made aver- a- ba- blah, blah, blah. The state law required the training be made available earlier this month and was passed amid a slew of legislation in Florida aimed at restricting what students read and learn about particularly topics considered controversial, such as race or LGBT. Republican lawmakers say that these laws are meant for parents to regain control of their children's education. Florida enacted other laws with this objective, including the Stop Woke Act, which bans lessons on divisive concepts, the so-called Don't Say Gay Law, which bans education about sexual origin. I can't talk about sexual orientation or gender identity in students K through three and mandates that lessons on those topics be developmentally appropriate for older students. And now the librarian training law. Jeez, guys, uh, Florida, I, I don't know what to say. They're banning all of this. We've talked about book banning before, but I think what's making this even more insidious is if that a parent doesn't like something that they see in the library they sue the teacher, not sue the school. They sue and try to get like federal law or a felony put on the librarian, which is just everything about this is just horrible and backwards. And they say it's stop woke, but it's they're limiting information. But the thing is, the Internet still exists. This is just all right. I'll give my two cents. And I'm going to let these hosts talk because that's the whole reason I have them on here so they can talk too. but. This isn't like before the internet where if you got rid of a book, the information was hidden and couldn't be found. A student can still go on their own phone and see just about everything they want. And they can go to TikTok and they can learn about gender identity. They can go almost anywhere and learn about it. So just because it's not at school doesn't mean it's gone. But why take that resource away when people could get it from a trusted source instead of the internet? Oh, okay. Let's get started. Who wants to go? Sure. No, I'm here. Yeah. I'm going to let Count talk about something specific that we mentioned in the chat. I'm going to leave that to you, my friend. But um, I just want to touch on the fact that if you as a parent, and I'm a parent, are that fearful of this woke doctrination, do yourself a favor. Unenroll your child in public school send them to a private school or homeschool them 
because no one cares what you think, Jimmy Ray. Nobody cares what you think. I, I just do a, do the world a favor and go away. I think we're all muted. Ooh, I want to play. Go for it. As someone who has very dear friends that are educators in the state of Florida, and I began my educational career there, I, I, this, this is such bullshit. I was specifically, like, I was specifically kind of appalled that you have um, folks with power that are saying, hey, college board, we are not going to allow an AP African American studies elected mm -hmm. in our state. One, it's an elective. Two, the history, like just you're forbidding the teaching of an entire. I, uh, it frustrated me so point like so much. But I also did. I, I did also reach out to some friends that are librarians or lights um, in the state of Florida. And I'll be shocked if either of them, well, actually the four of them that I, that I kind of had a conversation with, I just put them on a group chat. I was like, hey, you don't know each other. I need to ask you about this. I cannot see them still in that same role next year. They won't do it. They'll either head back to the classroom or they will change something different. But they will not, like the, the book censoring. And then, like you said, if someone is threatening legal action against you, and there could be a felony attached to you? No, it's not worth the risk. Shame on you, State of Florida. Gosh, it the uh, Florida Department of Education. Something needs to change. Florida just needs to break off and, you know, drown itself. I was hey. thinking that, but I love some people there, but gosh. Well, what? no, can we'll we, save we... them. We'll, okay. we'll okay. you know, we'll, uh, we'll evacuate those people but i'm okay. um, starting with mar-a-lago break off into Ooh. the ocean yes <laughs> it's america's wing can't lose that time for castration but, uh, whole... yeah exactly oh. it's just when you're especially trying to ban recent history it really doesn't make you look good because I think everyone's like, oh, yeah, we think of the 1960s as being so far away with a lot of the civil rights movement. But then you see like Jerry Jones, the owner of the Cowboys, being one of the ones rooting there with all the people saying, don't let this African-American girl attend this elementary school. It's because the people in power were the ones doing it back then and their parents. And it's just so shitty that they're blocking it. But I think they feel this is going to change a way of life. Or if they think they could just not teach enough of this, people will just be dumb and move on and just accept things like kind of the flat earthers. Like it's been going around long enough that people are like, oh, yeah, no, there's four sources. So it's got to be true. Oh, sad, sad, sad. Bunny, what do you think about Florida? So thought number one, the people who ban books are never the ones on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. Like – I'm racking my brain trying to think of it, and people that try to restrict access to information are never the ones on the right side of history. Thing number two, fucking parent your kid. If you there you already have the ability to like put restrictions on your own child's library account in pretty much any school I've ever heard of for things that they're not allowed to check out just because you don't want little Brinley Marie like <laughs> checking out a book about whatever, like doesn't mean that you get to deny, deny it to everybody else's kid. Like we're having a little bit of that in on a city level in the city where I am, like the person who's in charge of the library doesn't want to put LGBTQ affirming youth literature on the shelves and a good friend of mine who's a librarian there, she's like, y'all need to start a letter writing campaign because this woman is trying to, like, you don't get to tell me what I can't 
teach my kid. Like, just because you don't want your kid to read it doesn't mean you can't, you can restrict it for everybody. Next well, not thought, only that, they definitely don't want drag queens reading to them. Oh, that's, oh, heaven forbid somebody in fabulous hair and makeup read a book to some kids. Well, I can't read. Um, I'm not smart enough anyway, so this drag queen won't be reading to anybody. Ironically, my youngest temper tantrum is sitting next to me with a book on snakes unrelated to this. So. Um, and I don't, I don't, one more thing, like, I don't know how it is in other places, but the trend that I've noticed in the area where I am is that the only school districts where parents are giving one single shit about this is the upper income, super affluent districts where parents seem to not have anything better to do with their time. Mm -hmm. Like the title one districts around here, the title one schools, those parents are too busy, like working for jobs to try to buy groceries to then to worry about like, so it's really just the, you know, rich people with more time on their hands than like find another hobby. Yeah. Linda, like just go find another hobby. Just go do something. But no, the fact that just they're so threatened that they think one of the worst things that could happen is their child could turn out to be, you know, gay or, you know, want to dress differently or do something other than them that they want to destroy a whole school about it. It's just ridiculous. They might find out that people different than them exist and have had different life experiences. And God freaking forbid you find out... The great, 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 great grandpa was made probably not a very nice person back in mm-hmm. 18, whatever, and probably did some really shitty things. Like, learn from your history and learn to do better. Don't pretend it doesn't exist. I agree. Does anyone have any more thoughts? Shirley, count anything before we move on? Negative ghostwriter. I, like, I can't formulate, like, clear thought. Like, I get so upset that I'm like, why are people so afraid of the truth in the history? Like, of a state, of, of our country, of our nation. Like, we should be well aware of the atrocities to several people groups um, over the course of time. And this is, the, this is an opportunity to learn and be better. Um, not say, oh my gosh, don't allow this to happen. And the fact that they're even talking about banning like books on SEL, like social <laughs> emotional learning, like how to, I mean, those are vital for so many of our students that struggle with, um, whether it be mental health or just, um, coming into their own in their teenage years at high school, you're really going to prevent uh, like some self help and some self growth type books from being accessed for kids. Okay. Right, like, right. That's, that's like, ridiculous. look around at the behaviors that we're seeing in our classroom and then look me in the face and tell me these kids don't need some social emotional guidance, like learning, like right. how to process your own emotions. Like, go ahead. But it's not even that. I feel like they're worried about p- kids learning about the. So the oh my god, the equal rights movement in the 1960s when they're adding it in because it's not just LGBT stuff. It's because they don't want kids to have a roadmap for standing up to them. I think that terrified a lot of richer, older, whiter people around, say, quarantine when a huge movement just started rising up. And it was like there were old civil rights leaders who were there. There were new people to the playbook. There's old people to the playbook. And so you realize what happened pretty soon after that. Oh, no, critical race theory. We got to ban all of this from schools. We can't teach this because it's not fair. No, you don't want these kids to learn how to stand up to you, how to have, you know, peaceful protests and civil disobedience. That's not them just burning things down because that you couldn't fight that. It's hard. And so if you hide it and don't let people learn about that, 
and then just ban everything about them, maybe they won't do it. But the thing is, this is silly. It's like high, holding like a blanket up in front of your face in front of a toddler. You're like, where did I go? Yeah, all the information's still there. It's Google search, like LGBT, critical race theory, how to do, how to be civilly disobedient. It's all there. And I don't think banning it from the library is really going to be it. But can I tell you what? We used to always joke about like, ooh, maybe we can find the anarchist cookbook in the library. It wasn't there, but it was online. And we could find out all kinds of stuff that I really didn't need to know at the age of 13. Though I did blow up and burn a lot of things. Anyway, I think I went off track on that. Yeah, Jin has got a copy. She knows what's up. I'd like to take this moment real quick to thank some of the podcast patrons who are listening in because we're live streaming this one. Bookworm's been here. Jin has been here. We've had a couple other people come and go throughout of it, but I appreciate all of them who are there. So hooray! Hey guys, guess what? I'm listening. We have a Patreon! Oh my god, it's just what I've always wanted. It is what you've always wanted. That's right, we have a Patreon. For as little as $5 a month, you can get access to all kinds of bonus episodes, exclusive audio content. There's over 100 pieces in there. It would take you a couple of days to get through it all, just listening front to back. There's interviews with the hosts. There's access. It's just incredible. You should sign up. You get your name right at the beginning of the podcast. You get to know us a little bit better and chat with us in the Facebook group or during our live streams. Some of them I've even gotten to meet in person. In fact, I met some new uh, people that were listeners when I was up in Chicago. I went to this thing called the Chicago's Runner High Health thing. I don't know. It was a bunch of stoners, but what was really nice is they were talking about how uh, cannabis doesn't need to be for people who are always lazy. It's for people who are also healthy and in taking control of their mind. And so we did yoga and we worked out together. And we got to hang out. And I was like, oh, there's a lot of teachers in this group. Go them. So Chicago teachers, I like you guys. You're cool. Da, 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 da. Oh, yeah. Sign up for our Patreon. Do it now. Yeah. <laughs> so, my friends, you have two choices that are relatively close together in number. So I wonder if you're going to think they are close. Hey, Jessica. Glad you're here. So would you rather have... A little elf whispering in your ear 24-7. Or eat a Cessna 172 plane. It's a four-seater. Piece by piece. Once again, a little elf is whispering in your ear 24-7. Or you eat a Cessna 172 plane four-seater piece by piece. My friends, I I think I'm going to go with the Cessna. But I'm I'm curious what your take is. Shirley, what you got? Um, I like I said, I have anxiety and depression and body dysmorphia, so it's essentially like having somebody whispering in my ear all the time. So it's not gonna be much different. I'm going L- mm-hmm. It's just gonna be Dobby going, Give me a suck. Give me a suck. I, I prefer want a Will Barrel, but I mean we can party. There you go. Uh, let's see. What about you, Count? A little elf whispering ear 24-7 or eating a four-seat plane piece by piece? You did say eating, correct? Eat. E-A-T. Yes. Okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm going to have to go with the, uh, well, if it can't be an elf on a shelf that whispers in my ear, maybe about a snoop on a stoop whispers in my ear, <laughs> I'll go with the elf. Uh, let's just hope that they uh, switch up ears so it's not just always the left or the right ear it's not and, always the same one yeah and let's hope that they don't sound extreme if i could get the snoop on a stoop in my ear and he was doing all those affirmations have you guys heard his children's album is it dog yes. doggy land what is it's it his That's youtube channel doggy land doggy yeah and so i pulled on spotify it's like everybody loves you it's i don't know the positive affirmations one makes me so happy i can bounce to that and i'm like yeah thank you snoop I do need to be myself and make good choices. Thank you. But plain, that's going to be tough to eat. But I'm thinking if I spread it out over time, maybe just like have it shredded up in my Cheerios. I don't know. There's no one better to be than myself. (laughs) Bunny, what about you? What's your take? You're going to take the elf in your ear? You're going to eat a plain? Okay, so my question is, do I have to eat the whole plain all at once like in one sitting, like you can't have any more food till you finish your plane, or can I spread it out 
like over the course of the whole rest of my life. Like just I'm, sneak little pieces of upholstery into food forever. I'm thinking you got some time because I mean, Bunny, you're you're a trim little woman. You're you're not going a plane's like a lot of you, especially if it's a four seater. So I would not expect you to eat this at one time. Still, I think I might have to go with the elf just because <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm not asking. I, I am at the age where I keep Tums on the bedside table. So I'm not asking for more indigestion right now. <laughs> I would assume the plane had been drained of all fluids, but I think I'll eat the plane just because honestly, I've felt crazy a few times in my life. I don't need a little voice whispering in my ear on top of that. Nope, nope, nope. So I'm going to eat a plane. You losers can talk to your elves. But um, yeah. All right, friends. Well, thanks for joining us for another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. I thank all of my hosts who are with me today. First, Mr. Big, uh, Mr. Big, a big thanks to Mr. Count Chuck. Oh, you can call me Big. I love you, my. From the bottom of my chocolate heart. Thank you for having me. How sweet. I love you too. And also Miss Shirley Temper. These gays, they're trying to kill me. (laughs) Yeah, I remember that scene. And last but not least, Bunny O'Hare. Thank you for having me back. It was a pleasure as always. Happy birthday, Bunny. Oh, happy birthday, Bunny. Bunny. (laughs) Thanks. Excellent. Well, my friends, everyone, take care of your mental health. Uh, check into counseling. I was looking at insurance. They've made it even easier for us through, I think we use Blue Cross Blue Shield for my area. And we can do mental health checkups and all that without having to go anywhere. You could just do it online 24-7 from your house, which is pretty cool. If you're like shy about having to go, you know, actually talk to someone about your mental health, they can just appear in your room, your bathtub, wherever you want. So check it out. It's helped me. It can help you too. All right, everyone out there, deep breaths, deep drinks. Cheers. Woohoo! Yay! Yeah! Cheers. All right, friends, thanks for joining us for another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. If you have something you'd like to share with us in the podcast, hit us up on our website, teacherneedsdrinkpodcast.com. There you can leave a voicemail that we can play on the air or just type out an old-fashioned email. We'd love to hear from you and talk about it. I'd also like to thank our sponsors at Ludlam Dramatics for helping us out. If you are a theater teacher or no one in your building, go to Ludlam Dramatics right now and get all the great stuff. Last but not least, if you can, sign up for our Patreon. You get access to all kinds of bonus episodes. You get to hear us live stream. You get to be in our Facebook group. You get to be for our parties. It's a great thing. You will love it. There's over 100 pieces of audio content. You should sign up and do it now. All right, folks. I really do mean it. Mental health, it's a big thing. Take care of yourself. It's what's keeping me going right now. All right. Cheers, everyone. Woohoo!